So I wanted to talk about romance animes and I'll give two specific examples because though these are the ones airing this anime season and possibly talk about some that are airing in the next anime season but I'm talking more in general when it comes to romance animes because there are different types of romance animes you've got your normal one that your school setting slice of life very easygoing pace as well but sometimes people could argue that they're a little bit slow paced then you've got your harems which is like a subgenre where it's instead of it just being between one girl one boy it's and then of course you got yuri's as well let's not ignore those but that's just kind of like different branches to the same thing so there are three branches like a fork then you've got the subgenre of harem where there are multiple in love with one You've got some that do flip that role where the main character is either male or female. Definitely there's been a resurgent in female protagonists in a harem. I've definitely watched a couple. The villainous style story, visual novel kind of isekai kind of feel. Those have definitely become quite popular. And I do definitely enjoy those. It's kind of funny seeing so many people complain that there aren't many of those like types of harems. But there is. It's just they're not popular. And that's a big issue that I think some people have is that their favorite show isn't popular. Thus, it somehow devalues it. That, I think, is an issue. Too many people in the anime community value a show based on how popular it is and basically just follow a trend. Anitubers do this all the time. Anime communities do this all the time, and Anitubers are notoriously known for using Mal as an indication of success, which I think is lazy, and if you do it, you're just a bad content creator, and you're lazy, and you should just stop doing it, because it's bad. But I get it's easy, and it's lazy, because you can just use someone else's opinion, label it as that, and then if someone criticizes your opinion, you go, well, that's what Mal said. That's just dumb. Then, of course, you've kind of got other sort of spins on it. You've got like an isekai where they go in an alternative world and they find new love there. Or you've got your high school setting, then your work setting, kind of like a branch off to those. There's many different ways that you can spice up romances. You can also argue like power showmans where you've got things like fairy tale where there's romances in those, but they're not the main focus. You've got the main focus romances and the non-main focuses. But I think where a lot of the criticisms and the hatred you could argue it's hatred or just criticism comes to romances is generally two categories the harems and the main focus singular ones and i think a lot of that comes down to the fact that anime fans don't know what they want sometimes i've seen so many people complain that go oh i want there to be a situation where they get together quickly and it's more about the journey of them being together you then get that and then half of the comments and complaints are oh i wanted there to be build up this is boring they're together and you also see some people complain that yeah that and i do think this is an issue as well where you see a romance series they build up to the romance and then it just abruptly ends once they're together there's no real after story and that has become a bit of a trend where we are seeing some after stories now but i do feel like it was a problem at one point where it's many romances would just end as soon as the couple gets together because a lot of people just stopped caring once they got together they cared about the journey from point a to point b but didn't care about after point b that little bit of a journey afterwards and i think that is also an issue as well but I also think some people are kind of very much used to romance series where it hyper focuses on only those specific love interests and don't add in other characters on the sidelines. And a great example of that is Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian. You've also got other ones that are airing this season that are a harem based like Cafe Made Terrace. But I've noticed Cafe Made Terrace is nowhere near as popular. And I believe the reason that that is not popular is because the main male and female protagonists are not picture perfect. And that's another issue, is whenever you add flaws into a character, people instantly jank back and get upset and go, oh no, don't like that anymore. No, 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 that character can't have flaws. My waifu cannot have a flaw, it has to be perfect. And it's like, okay, but then that adds for no realistic character development. It just leads to a one-dimensional story where it's just be becomes some stupid misunderstanding or some annoying gimmick of why they don't get together. And Alia sometimes has her feelings in Russian's case. The reason why is because the main male protagonist hates themselves. Now, if you didn't work that out in the first season, you probably should 
rewatch things and look at some of the attention to detail of the hints of his character development but you will find out more about that later on in the show potentially in the light novels or season two if and when that ever happens cafe made terrors is about a main protagonist who is trying to run the goals of building a cafe to kind of live on the wishes of their grandmother but also to spite an old grisly old man that's trying to destroy them because of spite because of a past and so you see a character that is a little bit prickly but you also see a bunch of girls that are not picture perfect at the very beginning they're a little bit rough around the edges because of a foreigner entering that situation and because of that straight away people get turned off and go nah don't like it because the girls weren't perfect from the very beginning but the point of growth and the point of development is for there to be a point a and a point b and potentially even more than that multiple layers to their growth and development as change and real real interesting growth because you can have growth from the sense of a character being good and just becoming better but good growth in my opinion is seeing character defects being ironed out because no one is perfect everyone makes mistakes people are flawed and seeing someone go from a, having a flaw flawed issue in their personality and becoming better as an individual or overcoming past mistakes i think allows for good character development but i think the anime community especially in isekais romances all kinds of genres it's not just exclusive do not like character depth because in that sense because what it means is you have to put something into that character that people don't like a taboo whether it's they consume something that you don't like like the l word l o l i or some other type of character defect that is a little bit more disliked or they could just be an absolute douchebag again there are different layers to the faults of the character and as soon as you add in a fault into a person they instantly need jerk back and go oh no 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 i can't watch it that makes me uncomfortable and it's like that's the point if you see something that makes you uncomfortable that's the point of it goblin slayer was a great example of that when it first came out people got angry that that thing was in there from episode one and people went oh i can't watch this because of that it, that makes me uncomfortable and i'm like good that's the whole point of it but their excuse is oh no we should censor that because it makes me uncomfortable no no we shouldn't censor it it's there to highlight a issue you know bad things do happen mishuku tensei is one of those as well i bring that up because it's one that's very easily quite prevalent in the anime community rudy paul roxy these characters definitely have done good things and bad things but a lot of the times people only focus on the negatives so you look at a lot of these types of shows then you go into shows like Darmachi where you have a male male a male protagonist that is absolutely pretty much perfect in every way and then you have other characters that are a little bit flawed and this season coming up is going to be a wild ride because one character that is going to be very prevalent in the story if you've not seen the trailers has some major character defects and people are going to get very very angry at it but then you look at other characters that are kind of picture perfect they're kind of done but then at the same time you look at the young individual the little prom girl the the supporter she's definitely done some bad mistakes but because you know that kind of came out in a bit more of a time when people kind of accepted flaw characters it's kind of been brushed over a little bit but i do feel like if if Darmachi came out in this day and age oh boy oh boy people probably would not be liking that character then you look at something like high school dxd i believe if high school dxd came out this year or next year or whatever it would be massively controversial if the same season one identically the same came out this year or next year it would have massive amount of controversy because it seems to be a lot of anime fans do not like having characters that have some taboos about them have some character defects or not picture perfect or things like that and i feel like we've gotten to a point where people are like professional stay-at-home moms where they sit there and they go through a checklist of all the things they don't like and that gives them purpose they wake up every day and they go what can i find that makes me upset professional victims and then when that checklist is cleared off and those things are removed they then have to create a new checklist 
and then a new, and a new, and a new, and a new. And I think that's one of the issues when it comes to romance animes is we're going through this issue of a checklist of, well, we can't have those things. But I also think one of the problems is that people have tunnel vision when it comes to consumption of media. People don't like having too many side characters to keep track of. And as much as I definitely think SAO did get a lot of unnecessary hate in many aspects, I do think one of the most biggest issues in the anime for SAO was what I like to call the cheerleader squad, where the story only hyper focuses on two specific characters and any characters that get introduced are only there for a short period to push the story forward and they get sidelined. And the writer themselves has admitted to that being a fault of their own writing and has said that they've kind of ironed that out of their recent writing, but still it is something that they said that they do quite frequently. And it's not necessarily an issue in that sense because, yeah, you can make great stories where it's super tunnel vision on certain characters, but you also don't want to add in a boatload of cheerleader squad characters and then just kind of have them on the sideline cheering on it kind of makes people annoyed. But I think the anime community has kind of got to this point where that's what actually a lot of them just want. Hyper-focused stories that don't add too much complexity. And I think we're also getting an audience that is much more younger. The anime community is, I think, much larger in a younger audience, and a lot of those younger audience see shows outside of their own little echo chamber bubble. You've got things like, and again, I'm not hating on these shows, I'm simply using them as a reference of what they consume. Things like One Piece, My Hero Academia, Fairy Tale, Naruto, these kind of shows, Dragon Ball Z is another, these kinds of shows are generally consumed by a younger demographic right now. There are older ones that do consume it, but mostly, at least how I've perceived it, is consumed by a younger demographic. Then, you see these individuals, and they're slowly starting to expand outside of that bubble. And they see other content creators, because not every content creator covers those shows. I included. So they go outside of that bubble, and they see all these other shows, and they start consuming, and they go, wait, what? Wait, wait this has got actual pure romance in it? And it's not just hyper-focused on two particular characters that are constantly fighting? What? And then, instantly, the drama starts. Or you have a situation where many people will only consume these animes through clips, TikTok videos, however you want to call them, YouTube shorts, and I like to call those window dressing consumers. Like they're, they're just window dressers. They just go through and they just watch anime through the window shopping. Or window shopping, window dressing, like what, whatever you want to call it. I've kind of muddled that word there. Window shoppers. They go through a hallway and they only watch shows through the windows. Consumption. Only through that. And instead of going into the shop and actually properly having to see what it has to offer, they just stand outside and only watch from the window or look from the window. And those are what I call window shoppers. Because they're not consuming the series properly, they're just doing that. It's also the same as one of the biggest complaints I've seen on social media is these content creators that sit there and go, oh yes, I watched the anime in three times speed. And I just, go, and they apparently this one person had a macro or a keybind that allowed them to speed up the anime faster and faster and faster. And then they would instantly pause it once it got to a certain scene they enjoyed. They'd get rid of all the talking and the world building and then instantly just go to the fight scenes. And it's just like, what? And honestly, in my opinion, I think there are probably some content creators that probably do this and then talk about the anime. Just saying. Not saying names, but I honestly do believe there are some anti-tubers that probably do this. And I also think... Oh boy, am I going to upset someone. Ah, it's not like anyone likes me anyway. I think some reaction channels do this. Again, some, not all, but I think some reaction channels do pre-watch quickly through three, five times speed, see where all the scenes are, work out where all the big stuff are, and then they pre pre-plan their reactions out based on that. I think, honestly, the content con consumption field in the Anitube space has become very, very hollow. And before someone takes a jab at me, I'm not the only one that thinks this, I'm just the only one that's voicing it publicly. 
So before you all come after the message man, just know that there are other anti-tubers that actually feel the same way. And I think that's a big underlining issue when it comes to consumption, media, romance animes, harem animes, showmans, isekais, all of those kinds of series out there. But I ask the question off to you, what do you look for in an anime? What do you go, okay, this is what I want to consume, this is what I like about an anime? Because I think there's more anime out there now than ever before. There is so much variety to consume, but I feel like a lot of people are so picky that they get angry that there are other shows. They, they expect all of it to be made to their catering. And I think we are one of the luckiest generations of anime fans because we have so much to consume. I remember watching anime when we barely had any choices. Now it's too hard to keep up with. And I think that's another issue as well. Content consumption is so much harder. So, so much harder. And I think we are just spoiled as anime fans. But I think anime fans are getting a little bit jaded. I think content creators are getting a little bit jaded. And I think it's leading to a bigger underlining issue. So again, love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.